everyone. Welcome to the new style of Carlos and Lisa. I'm Lisa Romillard. And I'm Carlos Amesco. Welcome to uh, Carlos and Lisa here on Beyond TV. And as you can see, we're still practicing social distancing. Uh, Lisa and I are operating at about 70 miles apart. And uh, and I hope you're, are you well? Everything okay at your house? I'm great. Everybody here is great. My mom is in that kind of dangerous category of age yeah. group, but she is doing well. Everybody is fine. How about you? I know you've been kind of battling some kind of. I've had a, yeah, I had a cold and I've still got a little bit of a cough, but uh, you know, it's interesting because you, if you have all these symptoms of, you know, this is the time of year when I normally would get like a cold or something like that. And, and so we, we contacted the local health department to see if uh, I should get checked. And they said, look, unless you have a fever, a, a high fever, and you're really feeling terrible, then uh, go come get checked. Otherwise, stay away because we have too many people to deal with. So uh, I practice uh, social distancing by not going, going there. But I think it was smart to call in advance and just ask the question. And they said, no, if you're, if you're okay, I mean, you're able to function normally pretty much without too much uh, discomfort. So I, I decided that I didn't need to be tested unless things really take a turn for the worse. But I've had it now for almost two weeks. So this yeah. predates this whole COVID-19 isolation thing that we're doing. But um, I've been stuck at home now since Friday, uh, since, well, for uh, eight days. Eight days, oh. almost, almost nine days, yeah. So I started I left- isolation quite a long time ago. Yeah, I haven't left the house in like seven days. I don't even know. I don't even know what the outside world looks like anymore. <laughs> I kind of see it through the window, but then I, got, I don't go out. But I'm thinking to myself, maybe today, maybe I'm going to go outside and take a walk. Yeah. Because I think, I think there's a lot of people right now that are losing their damn minds in the house. You know, like I, I see it all over social media. I'm getting hundreds of messages from people about, you know, their crazy kids or their crazy spouse or their, you know, every, everybody's just not used to being in the same space yeah. as their entire family for an extended period of time. I, lo- I mean, we're seeing a lot of interesting memes. I think, I think now everybody's gotten the uh, the floor plan of their house uh, on on Instagram and on fa- Facebook and Twitter, where they say, "Oh, I think for vacation I'll go to the the, the third bedroom. I've never visited that bed." I mean, that's pretty <laughs> funny stuff. People are enjoying themselves, trying to make the best of a bad situation. But I'll tell you what, uh, in in listening to some of the governors uh, yesterday, uh, Gavin Newsom was chastising young people for being irresponsible and heading to the beach. And they, and he said things like, grow up. Like, this is bad. You need to be responsible and understand that other people are relying on you to make the right choice, the right decision about what your activity should be. And uh, and, and the truth is that he has a point. On, and then Governor Cuomo in New York said the same thing. So this is kind of resonating across the country. And we, we see spring breakers out having a good time. Uh, Malibu Beach full of people uh, walking around. I don't know. It's just like uh, the message is pretty clear to me. I, you know, I like stay home. Don't go out. Uh, if you need supplies, do that on a limited basis. Uh, get out and, and go to the store and get back, but wipe everything down. Make sure that you, you know, you're practicing safe living, I guess it's called, but uh, it's so weird. I, I, it's just yeah. not like us, right? We're so used well, to Well, it's certainly food. not. And you know, the other thing that Governor Cuomo has been talking a lot about is that young people often think But it's not just isolated to this incident, you know, or this particular situation. Young people think they're invincible. Young people think that they can just get through anything and it's totally fine. But the fact is, is, at least in California and New York, where some of the highest concentrations of these cases of COVID-19 are, a large majority of the people that are contracting this are in the kind of 20 to 50 age group. That is the young people. Those are the same people who think they're invincible going out and, you know, doing, not practicing the social distance. So what kind of our leaders have been trying to say is, you know, maybe you feel great, but it's disrespectful to other people to be out. It's It's disrespectful and and not considerate. Yeah, it's a blessing and a curse to be in California, right? We have such great weather here most of the time. I mean, they've had a couple of cold fronts go through the Midwest and, and towards the east. And so uh, it's easy to social distance when it's blizzarding outside. You don't want to go out there. Right. But here, you know, we had the, the the whole lure of going outdoors. Look, I'm sitting outside in my backyard and 
and uh, it's beautiful. It's a wonderful day. It's warm, uh, a little breezy. It's a perfect day to be outside, and yet you have to be smart about it. Take a little walk in the neighborhood and, and, and hopefully keep your distance from your neighbors if they're walking their dog or doing whatever. But I don't know, Lisa. This, is, this has been a little bit of a um, – it, it messes with your brain. It messes with your whole – because we're so we're so used to having all of our freedoms and doing everything we want to do when we want to do it with nobody, including the government telling us what to do. Right. Well, that's and then I, I think that's another another sticking point, because I'm seeing a lot of messages on social media from people saying that very thing. You know, yeah. I'm I have you know, I live in America and I have the freedom to do whatever I want. You know, nobody can tell me what to do. That's the beauty of this country. And, you know, sadly, in this situation, we have to think of it not as that, but perhaps as you know, a way to help our fellow American out yeah. by doing what you can to protect yourself and your family. I want to ask you about your Italian family. Uh, have you reached out to them in Italy? How are they doing? How are they coping? Do you know? At, yes, I have. Most of my family's in Sicily. Um, they say, I mean, look, the healthcare system in Italy is government run yeah. and it is quite frankly, crappy. So, um, you know, yes, healthcare is free for everybody, but they cannot keep up with what's going on. And sadly, Italians are even more defiant than Americans. And when this all started, you know, they just said, we're gonna, we're Italians. What we do is we're, we socialize and we're outside and we, we, you know, eat together all the time. And, you know, and so this spread rapidly and it's, it's a, it's a problem in Italy. Now my family's all in Sicily. We talked to them a couple of days ago. And at this point, nobody in our immediate family um, is suffering with it. Thank God. But they're, you know, they, and my family in Sicily owns um, the bakery in town. And so they, you know, are, are, are just kind of trying to batten down the hatches as much as they can right now, but they are inside and they are not, you know, they are definitely social distancing, but they're fine. Thank you for asking. Yeah, that, that's very tough. And, you know, my immediate family, everybody seems to be okay. I know that I had a conversation with my uh, sister yesterday, and she was pretty distraught, uh, pretty emotional about all this. So, uh, well, Lisa, How this are your parents, though? I'm worried parents about your parents. Are good. My parents are good. They, they, we've isolated them, and in, in, they they're in the back uh, in, a, in a guest house at my sister's house. And uh, we turned to what, what basically is a shed into a wonderful apartment for them. So they're okay. There's their social distancing. Anyway, ho hopefully everybody will, uh, you know, heed the words of uh, our leaders. Stay home. Be good. We're going to be with you uh, throughout the uh, throughout the time here. We're going to try to do this uh, as we're doing it now on on Zoom, like everyone else in the world. And uh, Lisa, you you stay well. We're gonna the show will continue, right? We're gonna we're gonna add segments and things to the show that uh, you would normally see from our studio, things that we, you haven't seen that we've held in reserve that we pre-tape. So that's part of the show. We're gonna do this part on Zoom and talk this way, and then the rest of the show you'll see is normal. But look, uh, the the news is grim. The news has been tough. To, if you don't want to watch news, you can watch Carlos and Lisa. We'll try to put a smile on your face, Lisa. Definitely, definitely, and we are gonna include. Other segments that are, are, are things that you can use in this time. Um, I know we have a segment uh, coming up a bit from a hiring manager about how to prepare yourself if you've uh, unfortunately lost your job through all of this. There's going to yeah. be lots of great segments that we're still working on. Carlos is working on them from his house and I'm working on them from mine. Um, we really want to make sure that we are giving you guys um, different angles to the stories that you're hearing. Um, every day and like Carlos says maybe you're sick and tired of looking at all the grim news but we're going to try our best to give you stuff that you can use and stuff that'll put a smile on your face all right we'll be right back with more Carlos and Lisa don't go away still ahead he's the host of Gervy's Law on KABC radio what Alan Gervy says has impressed him most from the interviews he's done Cindy Crawford, Gloria Allred, and Kent Starr are just a few of the big names on the Gervy's Law radio program focused on the top legal issues of the day. Founder and host of that show, Alan Gervy, is also the managing partner at Rowan Gervy and Wynn, and he is here to talk all about it. Love Hello. your show. It's a terrific show. Thank you. I appreciate it. You and it. Carrie do an amazing it's job. It's been there. so much fun, a yeah. labor of love, and I know you guys know that because you've been in this business so long. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but 
But it takes a lot. Okay, so you and I were just, uh, you kind of made, mentioned it and I want to talk about it because, you know, you've got a lot of big name people on do, your on your show. There's a lot of people that come in with really interesting stories to tell, but it's not always easy to be the person interviewing those people. It is not. <laughs> and sometimes you think it's going to be a real easy interview. It is not. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you're sitting there thinking, when is this person going to stop talking? <laughs> Like I'm talking now. <laughs> Always happens. I, you know, recently, I don't want to name any names, but couldn't get the person to stop talking, and yeah. I end up interrupting. But I think the ones that have done a lot of TV and radio uh, know how to do it. Alan Dershowitz has been on our show a couple times, and it's interesting because what we do is we look at the person, not the issue. Mm -hmm. And when we started talking about, to Alan, for instance, about his background, he said, my mother always told me I would amount to nothing. I couldn't even wow. get through high school. Wow. Alan Dershowitz. Wow. And that's what so he said. a little said. tidbit we didn't know. Wow. And, yeah. and you know, these are the things that we're learning. Right. And this is what I try to do as an interviewer. People love to talk about their background, them, where they came from, their families. You know, when uh, Jerry Spence, wonderful, legendary attorney from Wyoming, uh, from right? Wyoming, yeah. talked about his values and how he became, you know, this cowboy lawyer right. who mm -hmm. everyone looks up to. You know, F. Lee Bailey, something so different, definitely not the values yeah. of Jerry Spence, but he was passionate on my show about what he believed in and you know he would tell me about what happened behind the scenes on the OJ trial for mm -hmm. instance yeah. little things that these people say when I talk to Christiane Amanpour and um, people who are on the air all the time like you guys are and they start talking about their life or talking about how they got there that to me so is really interesting. interesting. Stop talking for a second. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm glad you said that. I've been waiting to say that my whole career. <laughs> Why did you decide to become a lawyer? I'm going to pitch it right back at you. You know, I was a DJ on a cruise ship. Um, Wait, what? I was a DJ on a cruise ship. I graduated from Brown University, went on this cruise ship. I was on for a year and a half, and I stopped, and I got a phone call from my parents. And my parents said, you got into law school. And I said, I didn't apply. <laughs> what? And they said, we did. Oh, oh they applied gosh. for you. Are you wow. kidding me? And, you know, one thing led to another. I have, as people have said, the gift of the gab. So I like to talk, even though as an interviewer, as you know, it's tough to do because you sure. want to let, as you're letting me talk, because yeah. I you know, have a diarrhea talk. of the mouth, <laughs> you let the guest talk. So, you know. It's something that I wanted to do in court. I wanted, you know, I always said I was watching Perry Mason with my parents a long time ago when I was a little boy, and I said, I want to do that. And they said, you want to be a lawyer? I said, no, I want to be the actor who's playing the lawyer. <laughs> I want to be Perry Mason. <laughs> Raymond Burr, by the way. Yeah. Raymond Burr, yeah. Um, but Perry here, Mason. I want to talk about your favorite guests, because you've had some really big names. Yeah. Who is somebody, either your favorite guest or somebody that, put something out there that made you, in all of your experience, say, I didn't know that. Wow. Well, you know, recently, uh, Gretchen Carlson was on. She used to be <gasps> Fox fascinating News. The, story. The Fox, Fox News. Yeah. The sure. Fox News. All and these movies have been made about what she did. Bombshell what was Absolutely. made about her. Yeah. And she was fascinating. She opened up, and she talked about what it was like for her living in her working world in this really awful environment. And to me, when I hear people opening up their soul, I'm like peeling an onion, yeah, and I'm getting sure. to their soul. Gloria Allred, my first question, I, she's been on my show several times, and the first question I ever asked her was, people think you just go out in front of the media because you want to do it for yourself. What do you say to that? And she Ooh. says, I don't care what people say about me. <laughs> I don't care what people that call so me. True of her. Yes. I am giving a voice to people who don't have a voice, and that's all I care about. And that was meaningful to that's me. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She and Lisa are very similar that way. Yeah. Her daughter, they're like two, two fiery, mm -hmm. feisty lawyers who do the, their advocacy for their people. And that's, I think, part of what 
I enjoy about listening to your show is that you give us a, an inkling as to what it was, what it's like in your profession. Because when you go the range from Kent Starr to Alan Dershowitz to Jerry Spence, that is a that's a lot of different personalities in one profession, and a lot of different political perspectives. Totally. We don't go left, right, yeah. middle. We just look at the person. Everyone is a human being, and everyone has something to say, regardless of what it may be that they're saying. And I try to get you know uh, when you have. Erwin Chemerinsky, who is uh, USC. You, mm -hmm. Well, now, and he's the dean of uh, Berkeley Law. Oh, and that's right. He's moved up. He's to Berkeley moved Law. up. Yeah. Uh, very left wing. And then we have Ken Starr, or we have either we get debates of people, and we see where they're coming from. We talk about Supreme Court cases and what the perspective is. So all of these people, and then we have actors on who have a different perspective. We did this whole thing on Corey Feldman when he was talking yeah. about, right. um, you know, the child child abuse sure. and and he came and opened up his heart and and said things on the air with Kerry Kasem who he used to date actually so when can we hear your show yeah. so people want to listen our to shows it. are uh, heard every week Sunday at 5 p.m. on 790 KBC uh, 790 is uh, local here yet you can hear it streaming live at kbc.com and if you go to the Gervies law uh, site you will see the podcast there there are 300 podcasts you can find any of these people we're yeah. talking about today and listen to it's what they have to say it's a fascinating show and i love listening to it it's i appreciate fantastic. it thank yeah. you very and much oh, so many great guests so many good topics things that we care about in our daily life and thank you for coming Alan Gerby, for having thank you. you here we'll be right back next celebrity chef michael chang is back making something sweet in the kitchen loves a good dessert and why not do one that you don't have to deal with in the oven celebrity chef michael chang is here to talk about no bake desserts hello hi lisa now you're singing my tune <laughs> dessert tell me all about it i love these two desserts because you don't have to turn on your oven it's love easy it. it's fast and they're actually really beautiful they look good they kind of they're kind of a show-stopping dessert as well so perfect get started let's go First, what we're gonna do is a ladyfinger and strawberry verine ladyfingers are just like a light sponge cake and oh. i like this because it's and you very bought, you just bought these from the store yeah you can buy these at the grocery store they Ready sell them usually like in the cookie aisle okay so i'm gonna take these ladyfingers and you could use pound cake, but what I like about this is there's less than one gram of fat per serving for the oh, ladyfingers. Yeah. Great. Really low in calories, so we're Perfect. just going to put about three on the bottom. Okay. And then I have some strawberries that I've cut up already, just a small dice. Okay. I'm just going to put about a teaspoon of sugar, just a little, little bit. A little bit. Yeah, very, very little. Not a lot. The zest of, this is a Kara Kara orange. What's a, love, what kind of orange? It's a Kara Kara. It's Northern California orange. Oh. It's beautiful. It's like a pink flesh inside. Ooh, I love very the, the zest of the orange. See yeah. The oh yeah. See, there's the inside. Yeah. Hold on. Let's let's hold. that yeah, There you go. <laughs> there it is. Really bright. Juice of the Cara Cara. If you wanted to use Grand Marnier, you could. Okay. If you wanted to leave it alcohol free, you could do it just like this. Okay. So we're just gonna top it with a spoon of that. Yeah, a couple spoons couple of spoons. The straw yeah. strawberries. And then you can do one more layer if you want. You can do two more lady fingers and uh -huh. then a little bit more strawberry. Got it. And just and just gonna, like. Push it down. Yeah, and then we're gonna top okay. it with the whipped cream. Oh, that's easy. It's so easy, right? And look how cute it looks in this little jar. Does that look cute? So cute. A little mint leaf on top. Oh, hold. Let, oh, sorry. Let me. That's okay. Mint. <laughs> sorry, I took it away before you could garnish. A little mint leaf on top, and there's our first dessert. Oh my gosh! How Super easy. easy. Didn't Beautiful. have to bake anything. Really light. Really light. The second one we're gonna do is a blackberry um, cheesecake parfait. Tell me so, all about again, it. Again, we're going to use a mason jar. These, I got six for a dollar, Dollar Tree. I love you the know Dollar me. Tree. Yes. Affordability, Perfect. love it. Uh, we're going to do a graham cracker crust. So I'm going to show the viewers how to do the easiest graham cracker crumb. You don't have to pull out the food processor because it takes a lot of water to wash. I was just telling you, my favorite way to do it is just like this. <laughs> So I've got it in a Ziploc bag, yes. rolling motion. Yeah, get it out. One, two, three. Yep. And that's Perfect. it. You can store them in the same bag. Perfect. Your graham cracker crumbs are done. Already Finished. done. Finished. So it. fast. Okay. No cleanup. Just like that. So we have the crumbs. I have two tablespoons of melted butter. It's already in there. Yep. Okay. I've got the graham cra cracker crumbs there. Okay. I'll move that. And so I'm just going to do the cheesecake filling portion of this. And again, it's no bake. Okay. I have three ounces of white chocolate. 
and oh. a quarter cup of heavy cream that I've melted in the microwave. Okay. This took about 47 seconds. 40, it's a specific 40. number, Michael. <laughs> Everyone, everybody's microwave is different, but around a Four. minute or less than a got minute. Got it, okay. So I'm pouring this into six ounces of softened cream cheese. Okay. I've got a splash of really good vanilla extract. In and, there already. In here already. Okay, so cream cheese, vanilla extract, white chocolate, and? A little bit of heavy cream. A little bit of heavy cream, So got six it. ounces, we are gonna just use a handheld blender. Mix blend this up. up really quick, yep. Okay. Blend it up, you're gonna blend it probably for about 30 seconds or so. Okay, and in this, just so I, I'm clear again, this is just the crushed up graham cracker with yes. a little bit of butter. Yep, melted butter, that's okay. it. That's gonna be the base of that. So if you wanna fill that up, maybe yep. about an inch of the crumbs got and it. stuff. I'm actually, I'm cooking, Michael. Yeah, Yay, maybe hey. like one or two more spoons. Uh, one more? Mm -hmm. Is that, okay. And, and then just like kind of pat it down. Exactly. And then I'm okay. just going to make my own little pastry bag here. Everybody I feel like has um, a Ziploc bag. Oh. So I'm just going to pour the cream cheese mix into this little Ziploc here, bag. Here, here. Got it. Got it? Two okay, man perfect. job. Yep. Got it. And then all I'm going to do is just clip the bottom. Because I feel like if you try to scoop this in here... It might be really tough. Yeah, it might be really tough. One more scoop of the graham cracker. Okay. I think would be good. Great. Oh, that looks delicious. And then I'm just cutting Cut the bottom. Cut a little edge. Yeah. Yep. So I'm going to squeeze the cream cheese mix right oh, in here. Oh, look at that. And then I'm just going to tap it just to even tap it out it a down. little bit. Tap it yeah. The blackberry syrup, blackberries, a tablespoon of sugar, and a squeeze of fresh lemon juice. That's it. Really? Yep. So you pour the sauce oh. on there. Look at how pretty that looks, right? It looks beautiful. I'm going to garnish with a little of rosette whipped of whipped cream. Oh my gosh. A fresh blackberry, a little bit of graham cracker oh crust. My, I will just put them right here in front of each other. And then just a fresh sprig of mint. How I mean, how beautiful are these? And how easy were they? So easy. And these are, you're right, they are, they are little showstopper desserts. <laughs> I mean, you can already have them made. Absolutely. You chill them in the refrigerator. Definitely. Sit them right down. Trays. Perfect. Perfect for spring, too. All spring inspired ingredients the mint, the strawberries, blackberries, everything here. Delicious. And I love the cream cheese. All right, Michael, thank you <laughs> so welcome. much for coming. Thanks for having we'll me. We'll be right back. Coming up, how the legal system is working through the coronavirus pandemic. Former California Assemblyman Mike Gatto is explaining it to us. There's a lot of questions about the power of government in a time of national emergency like we're seeing right now. So what does that really mean for all of us who own businesses, who have families, who might be scared in this time? So we asked our friend, former uh, four-time assembly member, Mike Gatto, to come in and give us some, some perspective on what the rules are and how it works for us. Hi, Mike. Hey, it's great to uh, be with you from afar. Yes, good to see you too. Okay, so first and foremost, we keep hearing all of these things that the governor might start handing down. Obviously, he has said everybody has to stay home, non-essential businesses have to close. Does he really have the power to do that? Don't we live in America where we have freedoms? Yeah, the short answer is that he does, that uh, the powers of executives, governors, mayors, presidents during times of crises are fairly substantial. And they can do things like ordering businesses to close or ordering businesses to ramp up production of certain things. Uh, but I'll tell you, there are, certain, there are certain things that they can't do. Uh, for example, they can't tell a house of worship that they absolutely cannot have services. Uh, they also probably have some limits with respect to their definition of essential businesses. I know right now there's uh, some lawsuits that are gonna fly in the state of California because um, the governor has ordered that guns cannot be imported from other states. And what that means is that's sort of a de facto shutdown of gun shops because guns aren't manufactured in California. And as you can imagine, they're not too happy about it. That's interesting. Okay, so obviously the legal ramifications of all of these impositions that the governor is putting out, I mean, down the road, we're gonna have to deal with those. And you're saying that those lawsuits are already in motion? They're already in motion, yeah. I mean, um, you know, if you imagine, uh, if you read the governor's executive order, it states that there's a certain class of businesses that are deemed essential. And those businesses are set by an obscure federal department called CISA, C-I-S-A. And uh, I've read the list because, of course, I'm a big dork. And, uh, you know, you go through the list and, uh, you know, it's kind of uh, arbitrary, it seems, what is essential and what's not. 
But there's a lot of people who think, you know, for example, defending your house, that's essential, right? Uh, there's a lot of people who are concerned about civil unrest, uh, whether rightly or wrongly. So I think there's going to be some lawsuits uh, in the near future, people going to the federal court seeking restraining orders against some of these, uh, these orders that governors and mayors have put out. Okay. Um, I want to talk about, you know, I, there's a lot of speculation online on Twitter. You know, you hear the president say what he says vaguely, then you hear the governor kind of in both New York and in California, where there's the highest concentration of these cases of COVID-19, and you hear this more st stronger language coming from them, and then you hear the panic start and trickle down to the, to the regular citizens about martial law. You know, everybody keeps throwing that word martial, those two words out. What is that? What is that? And can it really be imposed? And do you think in this time it would be imposed? It's a great question, Lisa Rimlard. And this is one that I think is on the minds of just about everybody out there. Uh, my Twitter feed is blowing up with people asking this question. So martial law basically means uh, that the law is suspended and that the military, um, the people who practice martial powers, the military would run things, meaning running the courts, meaning that uh, you know if you do something wrong, you go before a military tribunal, not the court. That is pretty rare. So I tell people the outright imposition of martial law probably ain't gonna happen. But will we see National Guard in our streets? Uh, will we see people who look like soldiers patrolling our streets? I say that's definitely gonna happen. I would say probably within a week, we're gonna see soldiers, uh, National Guard soldiers, taking, the, uh, taking some of the law enforcement duties away from regular police. Now there's an important distinction. Uh, there's an old law called the Posse Comitatus, Posse Comitatus Act that people talk about a lot online in online forums. And that is an 1876 law that prohibits the military from enforcing the law. Um, but the National Guard, remember, technically are arms of the state. And their state governors can control them. They're not the federal military. So uh, we will see National Guard, I think, patrolling. Because you think about it, right? There's a lot of stores that are closed. There's a lot of people who are out of work. There's a lot of people who are sitting around drinking all day. And that's a horrible combination. Yeah, you know, I was thinking that, in fact, I just said that the other day. I mean, it would surprise me with all of these businesses that have to be shuttered because of the, the laws that the government, governor has laid down. You know, it, it would be surprising to me if we didn't start seeing some of that kind of criminal activity ramp up. So I would imagine, but how, but I mean, how does that work with the National Guard? If, if indeed, I mean, and we're not saying that has come down yet, but it could, like you're saying it could, and it might in the next couple of weeks with what we're all dealing with. But what does that really mean? Does that mean like if we go out of our house, some National Guard's man is going to come and say, get back in your house? What does that look like? Yeah, you know, it actually, um, you know, the, the closest proxy I think we have in recent memory is Hurricane Katrina. And there, the residents of New Orleans and, and Louisiana, they got very used to seeing National Guard soldiers uh, sort of patrolling the streets. Uh, would they say, gee, uh, you know, prove to me that you're really doing something beneficial? Probably not. I mean, if you said, listen, I'm delivering food uh, to my elderly mother and she's, she's, you know, she can't go out. I mean, how's that soldier going to be able to verify that? Um, but we will see, I think, an enforced presence in the weeks to come as things get a little crazier. What I tell people is be prepared for a psychological headline. I think that by this time next weekend, we're going to see a headline that there have been a million cases in the world. Now think about that. That's a psychological number and that might make people start to panic a little bit more. Um, I mean, obviously, you spent a lot of time in the state legislature, and I'm wondering what your assessment of how they're doing now and what kind of things can they be doing in the next, you know, seven to 14 days to help us in this situation, help small businesses, help families. Is there anything on the state level that they're not doing that you're seeing that they could be doing? Oh, I think there's a lot that they could do. Um, there's an unfortunate old phrase that dates back to ancient Roman times that during a war, the law is silent. And what we're seeing a lot out there is the law being silenced. We're seeing legislatures not meeting. Uh, we're seeing uh, a lot of power given to executives to make decisions that are profound. But what I try to tell people is the people who are gonna suffer the most during this is small businesses. I don't care if every human out there gets a $1,000 check. That's going to be spent on Amazon packages delivered to your front door. You can't go to the nail salon. You can't go to the gym. You can't get your hair cut. You can't go to a clothing boutique. All of those businesses have rather conclusively been deemed non-essential. And I'm worried that those businesses will cease to exist in the next several months. So what we really need are enhanced loans for small businesses. Uh, what we really need is some sort of mechanism to turn those small businesses into mail order houses and allowing them to come in under this whole non-essential decree. Um, other, if, if that doesn't happen, I think the face of America will change quite a bit. We will be the Walmart and the Home Depot and the Amazon.com nation, even more so than we are already. 
Right. Yes. Yeah. Obviously, small business is the backbone of this country. And if, if that fails, there's, you know, a large majority of people who will be out of work and then we're going to be in a whole another world of hurt. Um, you bring up small businesses. This is the last thing I want to uh, touch on because I've gotten a lot of messages from small business owners who are very concerned. One, about making payroll, obviously. Two, whether or not they will shut their doors forever because of this. Um, or, what can government do to help them other than loans? Because what I keep hearing from all these business owners is, I don't need any more loans. I've got all kinds of outstanding loans. I don't need more loans. I need help. This is not my doing. And the governor's told me I can't operate my business. How am I going to feed my family? Yeah, so you're going to hear something that Democrats very rarely say, and that is um, George Bush actually, George Bush Jr. actually had this right. Uh, after 9-11, the type of tax release that they passed was commensurate to the taxes you paid. So if you were a small business and you paid $300,000 in taxes uh, the last year, what he did is he retroactively provided a portion of that to come back to you as a refund. It wasn't $1,000 per person, which, as we already know, is going to be spent on Amazon orders. Um, it would be some type of meaningful tax relief retroactive to the previous year. This is March. One of the only blessings that we have in this whole thing is that people were just about to file their taxes. If you provided everybody with a very, very substantial refund, you change the tax code in 2019, not 2020, uh, these small businesses would be able to survive. It has to be some sort of massive, massive retroactive tax relief dating back to the previous tax year. Right. That would have to be federal. That would have to be coming down from the federal government and then as well, the state as mm -hmm. the state yeah. as well. All right. Well, Mike, and, and personally, how are you and your family doing? I know you have small kids. Yeah, we're doing okay. I mean, you know, it's hard to, uh, to uh, manage all the things you have to manage with three little rugrats running around. And uh, I'm shocked no one has run in uh, during this interview. But uh, we're doing okay, and we hope you and yours are doing wonderful as well. All right, we are. Thank you, Mike, so much. We're going to try and touch, touch base with you again next week and try and do something similar. I look forward to it. All right. Thank you. Still ahead, how the travel industry is pivoting with the new travel advisories and stay-at-home orders. Welcome back. A lot of folks have been uh, talking about traveling and their travel plans and vacation as summer is approaching and we're in the middle of this COVID-19 situation. So I decided that it would be fun to talk to our, our travel expert from Travel Zoo, Gabe Saglier. Gabe, how you holding up there, buddy? Well, it would be better if, if, if I was sitting right next to you right now, Carlos, uh, you know, sharing a glass of something, but uh, we'll have to do it this way for now. Obviously, you know, it's, it's the new normal, which, which ideally will, will be short-lived, but this is, uh, this is the new reality. Now, travel is, for the most part, on hold right now. I mean, when I think about it, uh, you know, I had some family members recently traveling overseas. Uh, they went to uh, Israel on, a, on, on one of these trips, these book tours, you know, that you take to go through the Holy Lands and things like that. And they yeah. barely got out of Israel before this whole thing hit. So some people escaped that. But uh, now as people make plans for the summer, may have already booked trips. What are you telling those folks? So, yeah, I think that the reality over the next, uh, I call it the short term, but really all of a sudden the short term has gone from three to four weeks to maybe closer to four to eight weeks, it could be longer than that. And even if the situation does get better here in the United States and we start to see some of these uh, bans relax, we don't know what's going on in other countries who are also closing down their borders. Those, those situations could be longer lived than ours. And so the idea of traveling uh, to far-flung destinations, I think that's really sort of, that's very much on hold right now. Um, you know, we're still, you know, the customer service departments of these travel companies are on overload. Uh, we're seeing uh, for uh, travels whose customer service calls are three times what they would usually be. So we've got, we, we have added extra staff. We're trying to deal with, uh, with uh, our members on a, a, on a person by person uh, basis. Oftentimes we're dealing with vacations with multiple moving parts, airfare, you know, hotel, tours, activities. Um, and it's really sort of a multi-layered approach with a lot of these vacations. Uh, as you know, a lot of the rules and regulations have been relaxed in rather unprecedented ways. So airlines are waiving fees to change or cancel your reservation. Uh, the idea, though, is to ideally postpone, not cancel your trip. So you're being given these credits that are, 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 are good for a whole year. And I think that as time goes on, they, that may be even extend it even longer than that. Uh, Travel Zoo has, has had to come up with some novel ideas to to keep people still interested in traveling yeah. i'm sure that you know as people stop traveling and this has been uh, devastating to the airlines hotels restaurants all over the world uh, tourist destinations what can we do to sort of do like virtual travel 
Well, that's the thing. I think right now the most antithetical, counterintuitive thing that I can tell you, Carlos, is don't go anywhere. Stay put. But that's exactly what we need to be doing, right? So uh, that's uh, we've embraced that as a company. Uh, we know uh, we're there's 400 plus of us around the world, and we're all hunkering down, staying at home. We're pivoting a little bit. We're sending out um, uh, you know opportunities and experiences that, that can be enjoyed at home. For example, discounted memberships to Babbel, uh, which offers you know more than a dozen different languages you can learn from the comfort of your own home. Uh, discounts on Samsonite uh, luggage, uh, access to virtual tours of national parks which are closed down right now. Um, so th the idea is really to sort of kind of feed that wanderlust while having to be relegated to your at-home environment. Um, we're also putting out um, offers that people can book. They're 100% refundable, 100% risk-free. But the travel window are really for the second half of 2020, the first quarter of 2021, where people are now, if they really feel like they, they want to make up that uh, spring break trip that they weren't able to make, maybe they've got a wedding they got to attend in October, maybe there's a cruise they really want to do in January of 2021, those offers are there. If plans change, if the situation continues longer than we expect, again, 100% refundable. But the idea is to give, as many travel companies are doing now, the consumer complete and utter uh, sort of a safety net that if, you do, if plans do change, you're not going to be stuck with any uh, with paying any fees or any uh, for any vacations you can take. Well, Gabe, uh, let's play virtual travel right now. I'm going to yeah. try to name as many pictures as I can behind you. We got Tika, Guatemala. Oh, nicely done. Paris. Yeah. We have Iguazu Falls in South yeah, America, yeah. Oh, okay. Sydney. Uh, nice. uh, it looks like Istanbul, and I can't see the rest of them, but hey. Well, we know, got the Sydney here. Opera House. We got Big Ben. It's funny because this is the wallpaper in my house, Carlos. I'm not, it's this is all over my <laughs> – so, you know, with, with my kids, we're like, we just grab, grab, take their hand, and we're going to go to London today. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's and that's the other thing. I mean, we, as, a family, as a dad of, of three, that's that's been, you know, and I've – taking my kids on the road quite a bit so it's been have you know it's been a creative uh sort of pivot to try to still feed that uh you know desire to kind of see different places and hear different languages and taste right. different foods and we're, try we're trying to do that at home as much as we as we possibly can yeah this this little backdrop certainly helps at least to kind of take our mind uh to where we would rather be perhaps but where we can't be at the moment uh um, I think that the, the, the way the travel industry is, is running now, uh, Carlos, is that summer could become a, a, an opportunity haven for people where we'll see sort of a bonanza of, of, of travel opportunity. Travel could be cheaper than we've seen it in a long time, yeah. uh, early to mid-summer. The actual act of traveling, it, it could be the late summer onward that we start to see that start to pick up. Uh, and I think it'll be those shorter drive market uh, destinations that will benefit first right the the the, the drive up the coast uh, you know stay within your state stay within your community that's what i think we'll start to see first and then the the will sort of loosen up and, and start to expand from there i'm just waiting for that to be as quick as absolutely possible of course. yeah well i know all of us are itching to get out just just to get out in our neighborhoods that you know i you may think i'm in california but i'm actually in the south of france so <laughs> oh, not, you gotta be stuck somewhere so, uh, you know it's, of course i've been working on my is, is, all right a couple of glasses of you right next to you i'm sure yeah thank you so much and wish you and your family well and, and, and you carlos and you know be be keeping tabs right here on carlos and lisa will gabe will come back and give us some ideas on what we'll do in the next few days as to things change you know things are changing day to day so uh, you're right. We maybe get good uh, good airline uh, discounts. We may get hotel discounts. Maybe a great opportunity to, to get out and travel and plan at least to travel in the next eight months or so. But Gabe, thanks so much for being with us. Stay safe. Same uh, to you, Carlos. Your family. See you again soon in person, sir. All right, buddy. Take care. Thanks. Next, what your business can do in these trying times to survive. Some ideas to keep afloat. small business owners, we are all concerned about our employees, the health of our business, and if we are going to be able to survive this coronavirus crisis. Our friend Kedma O oh is joining us from Oregon. She is the uh, author of Target Funding. She is an expert at finding free money. Hi, mm -hmm. Kedma. Hello. How are you? I am well. How are you hanging in? It's been tough, you know, I've in 20 years of doing this, I've never had this kind of devastation. In fact, right before this call, I sobbed with a, another business owner and said, 
I've got your back, you know, we're going to figure this out together. So it's unprecedented, but I want to tell people there's hope and uh, hopefully we can share some resources. Yeah. Okay. That's, I think that's important. I, I know you have a lot of clients and friends and, and people that you work with who are small business owners. And right now is a really scary time for small business owners. Tell me what you're hearing from them. Well, there's a lot of fear, you know, first of all, they're thinking about their employees, you know, do I lay my employees off? What do I tell them? They're thinking about their clients, you know, these clients that they've worked with for years are now saying, don't come to my home and, you know, take care of my maid service or don't do some pressure washing or it's devastating for them. Um, and then in between that, they're trying to figure out all the funds and resources that keep coming out. They don't know where to go first. They're in shock. Yeah, it's, it, it's overwhelming. And, you know, every day we hear something, things yep. change. Um, so I want to get right into it. How can people find free money? I know you're the expert yes. at finding free money. Where yes. is it? How do we get to it? So a couple of things. One is because, you know, I tell my clients St. Patrick's Day just passed. And I want everyone to imagine, just bear with me, that we're all leprechauns. And we're here to find the pot of gold except as a leprechaun, there are many pots of gold. So first on the federal level, we've heard about the national disaster loan. This is the Small Business Administration that's giving out loans up to $2 million, but it is low interest rates, it's 3.75%. So that's really good if you have a need and you can tap into that and you, know, you have another loan out there that's higher. However, that's one pot of gold. I want everyone to pay attention because the next level I want you to do is layer it down to the state because the state is providing additional pot of gold. So for example, Michigan just initiated by the state $20 million, 10 million for grants, 10 million for loans and eligible businesses can get a $10,000 grant, but they have to apply for it. So please key in, your state and then economic development and call them. Then you need to trickle to the local level. New York City businesses right now, if you're in New York City, you're 100 employees or less, New York City is giving a $75,000 interest-free loan. Interest-free, okay? It gets better if it's five employees or less and you have shown a 40% loss, they're giving 40 percent, no, excuse me, 25 percent loss. They're giving 40 percent cash grant to cover your payroll for the first two months. So this is just basic like federal, state, and local. Then you want to go to your credit card companies because every credit card company is trying to work with you so they can hold, they can push forward. You need to negotiate. And then if you have a lease, if you have a landlord, reach out to them. The landlords are working with people. I'm a landlord and I received a letter from my property manager saying, are you willing to delay 90 days for your tenants? Of course I am. So you need to reach out to your landlords. In this time of crisis, this is not the time to just go solo. You have to reach out to your navigators. So those are the top priorities I would have people focus on. Um, I, I think um, people are scared. I think a lot of business owners are uh, kind of shell-shocked right now. They're yes. like, do I continue business? Do I just try and collect online orders? Like, what should I be doing? But probably their best thing to do right now is to do what you're talking about, which is strategize about how you are going to fund this business for the next 30 to 60 to 90 days. Correct. Not only that, but I am planning to do a free webinar minimum of once a week because I want to help businesses because you're right. They don't know what to do next. You know, what is that message that's happening? But what we don't want is we don't want them to go bankrupt. Uh, what would be kind of your overall arch recommendation for small business owners in the next week? Okay. Number one, I know you're not going to believe this, but don't panic. When we panic, <laughs> We're not effective in the world. So know that there is a way out. Number two, I want you to take action. I want you to reach out to the SBA. Just look at their disaster. Definitely reach out to your state. Definitely reach out to your local. 
and feel okay to reach out to me. You know, I'm on the ground every day helping people. I want small businesses to win. Here's what I want you to know. We are the foundation of the United States of America. 99% of small businesses are, are what we're made up of. The government is not going to create a scenario that's going to shut us down completely. This is temporary. So we have to change our views and act differently. We are going into a temporary war and we need to act a little bit differently because of that. All right, Kedma, thank you so much for your time and stay safe and good luck. We will, we will stay in contact. All right, we're back. We are back and you guys are hilarious. We have been asking on social media how you are surviving this time. And I have to read a couple of these, Carlos, because People are they're so, so funny. funny. Yeah. So Jules, um, who I think is from Orange County, said, my husband is now working from home. I loved him more when he went to the office. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're spending a lot of time together, aren't we? Yeah. It's a lot. I get it, girl. I get it. Um, and my, uh, my friend Brian from Las Vegas messaged and said, I'm finding out I didn't buy enough Girl Scout cookies. My normal six to eight month supply is dwindling too fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can't hide them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people's rooting around for your stuff everywhere. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, uh, cl you clean so much that your house is sparkling clean because you've got to just keep yourself busy. You want to do things and you've got projects and the kids are going a little stir crazy. And this is, right. this is what's happening. I, I, I mentioned it at the top of the program where where people are like looking at their floor plan and going, oh, I think I'll visit the, sec the third bedroom. I've never, I haven't been in there in years. <laughs> So stuff like that. My friend of mine put out on Instagram the other day. He was like, anybody else rearrange all their cabinets, everything on the inside? I know. This is a good opportunity. I've been, I, uh, been uh, watching a lot of music videos, uh, the, these artists from home, uh, singing songs, playing their guitars, playing their pianos. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I watched a Sarah Nimitz. Remember her and Snuffy Wallen came in to our uh, studio and sang for us. And she's been doing the same thing from home and uh, and playing and singing. And I watched, uh, like, uh, she was on for 20 minutes the other day live, and I watched that. I had enough time to grab my guitar and play along, is it <laughs> which is great. Wow, you, you really must be bored, Carlos. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I need to bone up on my guitar skills, but there's only so much viewing on the Internet. There's only so much, you know, you can do to, I'm, I'm, as you know, I'm writing a book. I've been working on my book. There's only right. so much of that that I can do that I have to do something. And, and so I'm, you know, playing my guitar and, and, uh, <laughs> I, I have gotten so desperate that now I have taken up TikTok. So <laughs> I've seen your TikToks. I mean, you're all over that. That's amazing. Oh, I, because I have nothing else to do with my time. Like, <laughs> just like, I guess I'll go on TikTok now. <laughs> I wish I could figure out how to work it, but you know, at, I, I, I keep, keep doing Instagram stories. And I keep messing them up. You know, it's just, I just next time, Next time we are not allowed to have, be, you know, distant, I will explain to you how to do Instagram. Please, stories. yeah. I, All right. It's, so it's, you it's, guys it's, at home, please keep sending us your, your messages of how you are getting through this. We would love to hear them. Good, bad, and ugly. We want to hear them. We want to see what you're doing. Send us a video of your house. Send us a video of your chaos. We'd love to talk about it here on our show. Yeah. Try to keep a smile on your face through this really difficult time. And, and remember that, uh, you know, we're all, everybody, you know, we're, there's a lot of prayer going on out there. A lot of people are hoping for the very best. And, and uh, don't be afraid. Don't be scared. You know, this, this too will pass. And if you, as long as we do what we're supposed to do, I think we'll all be all right. But, uh, you know, for those of you who are suffering, we, we're, we're with you. We're thinking about you. We want you to be well and your family members to be well. But uh, Carlos and Lisa are here for you. Uh, please send us anything that you think, it, whether it's uh, a prayer chain or whether it's some sort of service, whether we can get something to you. I mean, we, we will do what we can from here, from our vantage point, to make your life just a little bit easier. All right. That'll do it for us today. You can watch. There's lots of bingeable content on Beyond.TV. So go there and look at all of the segments. There's hundreds of things to look at. Remember, it's Beyond, B-E-O-N-D dot TV. We love you and we appreciate you joining us. Check back with us every day. We'll have new content every day for you. 
and uh, continue to put a smile on your face. Thanks for being with us.